Howdy folks, so here we are with the first prototypes of the Mega 65. Uh, so this is the pre-series uh, that we've been talking about for a while. So we actually we have them now, we can lift them up. We can have a look, so let's have a bit of a look around. So remember these are based in the Commodore 65, so the power and joysticks are on the left. We've got one joystick in already, second port, reset button. Ha! Oh, a joy to have a reset button. The fantastic uh, mechanical keyboards. Uh, with the, the full keys, we've got the full cursor keys, we had the other video just before talking about how the left and up work in Commodore 64 mode as well. Uh, we've got the, uh, the lock lights that will come on when it's on, the floppy drive of course, that really works. Uh, and so hopefully over a, a few videos we'll show a few of th these things working. And then at the moment, ports on the back, uh, power at the back so it doesn't get in the way on the side, uh, cartridge port, external 1541 uh, disk drive port, VGA, HDMI, Ethernet, micro USB, no, micro USB, micro SD card, and three and a half mil audio jack. Um, we expect we'll actually have a hole in the next model ready to take a user port expansion that we'll design after the actual computers come out, but we'll have the provision in there for that. If we now have a look under the hood, Again, we can see that the beautiful keyboard with the, uh, it's got the metal plate and everything in there. Uh, keyboard, cable, clock, uh, real-time clock and battery, cartridge connector and all the usuals we expect to see. Uh, Full-size SD card internal as well, so you can actually have two SD cards. Uh, PMOD connectors by the trapdoor slot for expansion. Uh, the floppy connector, of course, and power for two floppy drives. So you can, in principle, have two floppy drives. Uh, we're not creating anything for that at the moment, but you could, down the track, if someone makes the uh, the VHDL for it, you'd actually have a five and a quarter inch drive on the cable as well, and have that actually work as a 1541. And then we've got some more expansion, so this is the um, internal speaker, um, so we can have a, 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 an internal speaker actually in the computer if we want to, and then this is a, an I squared C header uh, for uh, low bit rate. Uh, expansions and then we've got the uh, two FPGA debug connectors this one's already got the programmer uh, mounted on there and then there is an extra expansion connector connected to the smaller of the two FPGAs and dip switches so we can have some configuration in hardware but we've also got uh, static RAM uh, on the motherboard as well as battery backed so we can actually have you know is it PAL or is it NTSC we can have that all uh, configured in there so let's put this back together and fire it up. So the, uh, these pre-production units uh, were vacuum molded uh, and so they're fantastic, they're structurally as strong as regular plastic. Uh, the fit is almost as good as injection molding but not quite. Uh, so these are a little bit loose fitting but that's a totally expected part of the prototyping process. Uh, and when we go to actual injection molding everything will be fine. So let's turn it on. So if we turn it on you can actually see that it took longer for the monitor to power up than it actually did for the Mega 65 boot sequence. So I'll just do the reset button again so the monitor doesn't lose sync. And we very briefly see the, um, uh, the Mega logo there as it's checking the SD cards and things. And you've probably also heard the floppy drive words. So even though we're using an SD card for storage, the floppy drive will actually track and make the noise. So it really feels... And it, it, it feels like I'm back at a Commodore 65, like I used to use in the uh, uh, the 90s. So let's uh, load something. And again, we can hear it uh, do the, the head seek and the uh, the track bump. So really, just you know that feeling of uh, of using a real 8-bit computer, which is what this is, uh, is is really nice. So let's. Uh, run Nebulous. So we've now got the stereo audio output working as well. Not that Nebulous is a stereo game, uh, but we can get make it plenty loud enough. It's not a problem at all. That's actually interesting. I suspect that people will start repackaging games to remove the um, uh, the compression or patching, making a patch to XMizer D uh, D Packer or something that will use the 40 megahertz. Because now actually you spend more time waiting for the um, uh, the deep hacker than anything else. We'll have a, a quick look. We will play with hi 
uh, scores? Do you want to reset? Oh, no. Sounds fantastic. It looks fantastic. We've got quite a few games now that work essentially flawlessly. Uh, we, oops, what am I shooting that for? Uh, so we're continuing to work on the uh, improving the compatibility all the time. And again, it's open source, so anyone can submit patches for compatibility problems that they find, or they can submit an issue on GitHub and say, "Oh, my favourite game is not working," uh, and you know, provide some details that can help us to track that down. Uh, and again, it's just one of the great things of this being a community, uh, a community effort. Uh, clearly, I haven't been playing this enough lately. Uh, but let's load a different game. So we'll go back and again, like on the Commodore 65 or the 128, we can hold down the uh, uh, the vendor key and go straight to 64 mode. If I type correctly, that will help. Uh, let's have a look at another good old favourite. So the native loading speed, because we're not using any fast loader here or anything, um, and we're running at just regular one megahertz. Uh, so the Commodore 65 ROM will load at about two kilobytes a second uh, when it thinks it's using the internal floppy. If we were to go to 40 megahertz, then we can load something uh, you know, in of the order of a second. Uh, we might do that for the next game. Let's have a look at crack out. Okay, we're spending more time waiting for the uh, uh, the decrunch than anything else. Okay, let's get high score, let's load. Oh, okay, we've got a joystick in port one. We don't have to take our joystick out. We can just do a, a long press on restore, and we can say J for joystick swap. We get the nice thumbnail uh, in there to see what we're doing. F3 to resume. And we've now got the uh, the joystick set we want. Of course, we want music if you're playing. Uh, right. So, again, lots of games that are working really nice and are really, already really great fun to, uh, uh, to play on the Mega 65. And the FPGA seat implementation that we've got uh, is already uh, really quite good, as you can hear. Like it sounds really nice. There's nothing using the machine for me anymore that breaks the spell to say that I'm not on a real 8-bit uh, you know, uh, computer. It's just it's just really lovely and really fun to um, uh, to use. So let's, as promised, we'll load another game. This time we'll uh, set the CPU to fast mode before we load. Uh, hope 0, 0,65, or we could instead, uh, from in the freeze menu, we can do F to change the frequency. Just depends on what you want to do. So let's now load. Um, occasionally the keyboard will stop responding, and this is a, a known uh, bug that we need to um, uh, to look at. So we'll see if that fixes that. But we can, in fact, even change the CPU speed while it's loading. So if I hit there, now we'll go frequency to 40 megahertz. And you can hear the track step really fast. We'll go back to one megahertz so we can run it. And so you can see it's really easy to use the built-in freeze cartridge. Um, and so that actually is fully built in. There's nothing that you need to add. That's just uh, standard uh, on the Mega 65. So again, let's have a, a quick look at Commando. High score load. And again, the sound is really nice. Here we can see there's a little bit of glitching with the sprite multiplexing. We've got this extra artifact up here. Again, we, we know that there are issues uh, that we need to fix. But hey, again, it already looks really fantastic. Of 
is what I chuck and grab at this fantastically huge space bar, just like on the original. And none of this, uh, you know, modern computers with teeny tiny space bars you can't find in the middle of the game. Can I clear the level? Let's see. And we love our homemade joysticks as well. It's just as clicky as the keyboard on the Mega 65. But anyway, we hope that's given you a, a little bit of a, a taste for the uh, the Mega 65, the hardware, and being able to play games and things on it. So, super.